From today, I'm going to add a new series in our learning segment. Uh, we, I will take one job description, the real job description, which are posted in different job sites. And I will categorize those jobs as per consulting analyst, user. And if I will be the, uh, also I'm going to add the experience, uh, whether it is fresher's job or experience. And if I would be the, like, uh, if I'm going to take that interview, what type of questions I'm going to ask or how I'm going to answer those questions so that it will help you for your preparation point of view. So I'm going to uh, classify here uh, questions on the basis of conceptual as well as from the hands-on point of view, configuration point of view, scenario point of view. So what are the possible questions expected from that job uh, we are going to decode here. Okay, so in this category, I'm going to take the first question here. So hi, my name is Pradeep and let's start. So this question which I'm going to take, this one is related to FICO consultant and uh, uh, experience four to five years. If someone is having four to five year experience, then maybe this profile is going to shoot to that. Okay, so let me show you from where I got this one. So someone forwarded me this uh, one. So this is my the job description, right, which we have received the mail. And in this job uh, description, you will find uh, some important areas are there. Uh, although a lot of things uh, requirement point of view is there. So one is that uh, here uh, requirement is SAP controlling that you can see here particularly related to product costing, then questions related to something related to tax, then other skills are required here, uh, of course ERP knowledge is required, then uh, mandatory skills required uh, ECC and S4 HANA both. So that means here only with SCC it is not going to work, only S4 HANA it is not going to work, so both the skills are required. With a solid exposure version EC6 means new GL onwards, then after that uh, S4 HANA is also favorable. Right, so other cross module integrations are also required and uh, product costing other things are required. So I hope you got some idea this type of uh, uh, job descriptions which very often you are getting and a strong uh, conceptual analytical skills all these things are required as it is. Now let's take here the first question what is possible here. So question which is uh, first I have added here it is related to conceptual questions. So question is uh, how do we ECC? 6 and S4 HANA is different in the finance point of view and particularly this one is uh, related to controlling and product costing. If this question will be there in your interview, uh, what will be your answer? So this is a conceptual question because there are so many things are available in S4 HANA from the changes point of view. So that's why uh, it is not possible that in, a, in two, three minutes you are going to explain everything. But your answer should be crisp and your answer should be point to point. Right? In that case, what will be answered? If I am the uh, I am the candidate, and what I will answer, right? Observe me. So, uh, as you know, that S4 HANA is going to have the uh, real-time integrations or real-time process with Universal General. After this one, I am going to also show you the practical things so that you will get the idea. So, S4 HANA introduced here the real-time processing with Universal General, and which is going to simplify the data storage and it is going to enhance the reporting functionalities. It is going to consolidate FICO in a single data source, that is your AC docket table, which is going to reduce the data footprint or data redundancy, and also going to speed up the process. And uh, question number, uh, second part of the question, if you'll see how it is simplified related to product costing. So product costing point of view, in S4 HANA, product costing is more integrated with material laser, marking it is easy, um, uh, with material laser. Uh, I mean, earlier in ECC, we have two separate areas, product costing is separate. After that, uh, material laser is separate. Material laser has no link with the product costing, all the business process point of view. There is a business process link is there, but software point of view, no links are there. Tables are again different in material laser and uh, costing point of view. Now both the things are combined together and uh, so here you can give the example of uh, when the cost calculation will be there and uh, how it is going to link this one. So just add some practical scenarios. After this question, you will find a, uh, my example. So that part maybe you can add here. So this will be the answer to the questions. So just check this particular clip, then we will go to the next question. Now I'm in AC docket table. So I entered here my ledger, leading ledger and the company code I'm going to execute. So the data available here, it is not related to only finance, you are going to have everything. So you are going to have finance, you are going to have controlling information, so that includes cost center, like these are my finance documents and you will find a reference column here. 
Sometimes you will find reference column is updated with the same finance document. For example, this is 1002, here it is 1002, means it's directly posted. But sometimes you will find that this document is generated, for example, document number 100. Now this document is not directly entered in the system. It is integrated documents, it is integrated with some other documents. So this document we need to check what type of document, but it is integrated document. So here you can see the business transactions are available, right? So if I will check here what are the business transactions, you will find that all controlling business transactions available right so whenever we are going to have something in controlling you are going to have a finance document as your integrated document okay just for uh, uh, randomly i'm going to check here suppose rkiu which we know that it is related to assessment allocation and uh, when we are going to run the assessment allocation cycle in controlling we are going to have the internal document in controlling that is the old concept now in s4 hana whenever we are going to do the controlling allocations month end allocations and uh, we are going to have the internal document like here i have the document number 1004 suppose or 1302 you can see one finance document is generated so that means we can say in ecc data flow from fi2co whereas in s4 hana it is fi2co obviously it will be there plus controlling to fi also will be there so that is a reconciliation part similarly if we'll go further you will find that uh, i mean particularly controlling point of view you will find the cost center informations your profit center informations so those are also available in the ac docket table so this is how it is simplified so this column is related to cost center this column is related to profit center so you will get the material ledger information, so actual cost information. So once you will go dig into this or you are going to go further or you will go in depth on this analyzing this AC docket table, you will get more clarity on this particular AC docket table. Coming to the next question, the question is what is the importance of cross module integration in SAP particularly between FI and CO? Again, this one is also conceptual question. So what will be your answer? Cross module integrations means when we are going to have uh, uh, what is the integration scope here related to FI with other modules? So we can say that cross module integration is ensure that the financial data in your FI is going to align with our other modules like it may be controlling, it may be related to uh, uh, your logistic so that the data flow will be uh, smooth here so that seamless data flow will be there from our external reporting point of view as well as from the internal reporting point of view for example when I'm saying the profitability analysis so in profitability analysis we are going to get the data from SD module we are going to get the data from the MM module we are going to get the data from uh, profit centers we are going to data from internal order cost centers so all these are not part of FI but ultimately when you are going to prepare your report so you, in report the data will be available uh, from different sources so whether it is your internal report or it is your uh, I mean it is your external report or it is your internal report like your profitability analysis so the data is available in one place that is your AC docket table so you can take the reference of my previous example that uh, the practical things what I have shown in the AC docket table so from there also you can uh, give some uh, examples but of course when you will answer this type of questions make sure that each and everything you have configured in the system because uh, if you have no, until unless you will not explore all these areas or practically once you will not do the hands-on you will fumble in uh, in answer answering that particular question so once you will ex uh, explore I mean you have configured really these scenarios then only you can able to answer uh, confidently your questions now coming to the next question that is let's see what is that so uh, how you are going to configure the product costing particularly in ECC and S4 HANA so this question is definitely a practical question so hands-on uh, answer will be there or your hands-on expertise is going to help you here so if I will answer this question so how I will answer this one so configuration is going to start with defining various concepts related to uh, product costing so this includes our costing variant this includes cost component structures then defining the bill of material your material master data settings your routing settings so although it is part of pp but when you are saying that i have exposure of p2p everything should be included so that the cost estimate should be calculated and uh, uh, you can say that as you know that uh, uh, cost is the cost calculation is divided into two segments that is your plant cost and actual costs so first will i will go with the cost estimate calculation which is uh, uh, in the beginning of the period then after that we are going to go for cost object calculation which is known as your COP 
PC. So cost object calculation once will be calculated, then end result will be the variance analysis or which will be a variance analysis or WIP, right? So when you are going to answer your questions, give example of a particular material, whether it is single level, multi-level, your wish as per your preparation or your configuration, but give the practical example. So this is my product. These are different components are available. And uh, then this is how the product cost we have calculated from the plant cost point of view. Then after that actual cost point of view, the various uh, uh, segments will be there. And when an end variance need to be settled against your COPA or against your finance, against your materializer. Now check this particular clip so that you will get more clarity on the uh, uh, supporting with your answer check related to product costing as you know that product costing is divided into two segments one is your planned cost another one is your actual cost or which we are saying that cost object controlling so right now in the screen you can see it is cost related to or it is a planned cost calculation so my finished product is in this example uh, 161 and this is my planned cost calculation which includes some more components if i will expand further you will find uh, this includes semi-finished or cost calculation and multiple components are available here in this my cost calculations and uh, for this of course you have to do a detailed configuration related to cost calculation so this includes my cost center this includes my work centers means copp integrations are there this includes my costing variant right so if uh, we will go to this costing data you will find here the costing variant is there that also we need to configure the cost component structure also we need to configure right so we which I already explained. So this is my cost component structures here. This includes my work centers, my cost centers, then all the master data. These are my material masters. So uh, in, in my example, uh, these are my 162, 159. These are the bill of material data or master records. So everything combined together and we have calculated our cost. So this is our plant cost calculation. Similarly, if we will go to uh, actual cost calculation for your reference, this is one production order I created. And in this production order, we have calculated the cost then uh, this is my components related to cost calculations okay so here it's completed just i'm showing the end result right so this is the cost we have calculated so entire process done this is related to cost object controlling and uh, you can see here one figure is there that is 1903 so this is the variance already i have created one video related to variance you can check that i will add that in the i button uh, so this variance is comparison between your plant cost as well as actual cost and once you will calculate this variance we are going to settle this variance with product uh, with our material laser with our copa with our finance too right so all these are combined together we are saying that it is our copc or material laser copc along with material laser so you can see here uh, this figure is 1903 which is calculated in, in production 1903.67 so same is available in my material laser report 190367 uh, and with reference to our source production order check here what is the production order so production order order number here it is uh, 1000282 so with reference to same production order you, you can see here this cost settled, this variance settled to material ledger 190367. Not only that, that also we are going to report in the finance. So one nine, uh, same figure is also there. It is my FI report. So same figure is also available here. Plus we are going to internally report in the COPA 2. So that also should be uh, available here in the COPA report. So this is by profitability report or margin analysis report. So here it is available. Coming to the next question. So have you configured SAP controlling allocation cycle and what are the challenges you face? Now in this case, interviewer is not asking any particular allocation, whether it is uh, your uh, by allocation by using any primary cost element or secondary allocations, right? So anything you can give here example, like maybe you can give your distribution method, period and distribution assessment, or in fact, uh, as here, nothing is mentioned related to cost center. Maybe you can also add here the internal order allocation. So anything is fine. But one question is there which is related to practical what the challenges you have faced here right so what would be my answer now in this case maybe if you have not faced any challenge or let's say you don't have that exposure from the project point of view create some scenario create some story so that it is going to uh, uh, support your answer like you can say that yes uh, i would review this uh, allocation cycle just to ensure that it is set up correctly and check if any master data was changed in the mid, mid of the year for example you have changed anything in your segment or even sender details or receiver details something you have changed 
change, make sure that there should not be any change or if any changes are there, then it should be adjusted accordingly. Then I would then verify the accuracy of the allocations, like as I said, uh, master data point of view, statistical key figure. So if any changes are there, whether statistical key figure is properly updated or not, right? So if uh, anything, um, uh, like if any you are going to add any activities, that should be in also included. So finally, I would fix the intermediate issues and set up the uh, process before uh, future execution. So in this way, you can give some uh, practical example so that it is going to support your answer. Coming to next question, how do you manage completing, uh, competing any stakeholder demand for SAP enhancements? So here interviewer is trying to figure out whether you are confident on client handling and all. So how, what should be your answer? Again, this answer, your answer may be vary from my answer, but what, how I will answer this question. So I would prioritize uh, by aligning the business object with the stakeholders request, focusing on their initiatives that is most significant and it is going to impact overall impact, the transparent communications, uh, timely commitments or clear timeliness, setting experts any crucial information, regular updates, showing the progress, help maintain the stakeholders' trust and satisfaction. This type of uh, questions will be there when you are saying that I have exposure to the client handling or let's say you are coming from the business analyst role, right? So in that case, it, they, they will judge you how you are good in the client handling. So this answer was show you that this this type of answer is going to uh, like it is structured in it should be structured in a such a way that it is it should show your confidence the clarity the problem solving because that was a uh, question was there how good you are in the problems what or what is your problem solving skill so in that case uh, how what what is your approach towards the problem solving skill highlighting the relevant experience and all so i hope uh, you got some clarity if this type of job descriptions will uh, there if you have anything uh, any in interview mails or anything so feel free to forward me to that so that uh, I will uh, crack those JD and I will give you the what should be the answer and what area you need to focus so I hope this type of uh, explanations are going to help you for your interview point of view so see you soon in another video thank you